Hello, everybody. Andrew Majewski here with Dental Tutoring. So I know taking the board exam, even studying for the board exam, obviously, is a very stressful time. You're either at the point where you feel like you know everything, but you just don't know for sure, but you don't know what to study. Or you have been studying a ton, but you feel like you know nothing or not even close to what you have to know. So watch this. Let me just go through some questions that you do need to know for the board exam. This will go for dental hygiene and dental assisting students too, and I will let you know which is for which, but it can't hurt to just watch the whole thing, whether you're a dental hygienist or a dental assisting student, um, and just see if you know these questions. But if you don't, don't get discouraged. It just means that you need to go back in your notes study that topic and then you will know it for next time, right? It kind of gives you an idea of where to get started again. If you're part of um, the Board Exam Prep Academy, the big course that I have teaching you all about the board exam, you should know all of this, okay? You should, because I have been training you well. But if you don't, again, don't be discouraged. It just means you have been probably studying too much and your brain is on overload. Or you have not been studying enough and you need to get study, okay? So I just have some questions on my other monitor here. But um, so let's just start with some of the easier ones, okay? So think of things like this. You need to know the difference between perio and gingivitis. This is for dental hygiene students and dental assisting students. So with gingivitis, remember, it has to do with the gums, with inflammation, does not have to do with the attachment levels and does not have to do with the bone support around the teeth. That would be perio. So gingivitis is thinking of the gums are red, the gums are bleeding, okay? That's gingivitis, okay? But perio is taking it a step further where you are starting to lose the attachment or you, you, you know, have and or you could be also losing the bone support around the teeth in more um, advanced forms. Somebody can have perio, but not necessarily have gingivitis. OK, so make sure to know that also. If you guys have questions, make sure to comment below and I am more than happy to help you. So perio first starts at a four millimeter pocket. Even if there's just one, that patient has localized perio. So when you're talking about perio, even when you're talking about gingivitis, you need to know, is it localized or is it generalized, okay? So 30% of the mouth is localized. More than that is generalized. A lot of, um, I almost said patients, <laughs> a lot of students think that if it's 50% that's localized, if it's more, it's generalized, but no, it's 30%. 30% is localized. If, 30 if more than 30% of the mouth, let's say, is bleeding, that's generalized, okay? So just to kind of give you guys an idea, if you're seeing a patient and the gums are bleeding everywhere, that's generalized gingivitis doesn't mean they have perio. To know perio, you have to take the pocket depths. So you need to do the probing. Without checking the probing, you do not know if a patient has perio or not. It can be obvious, of course, like if a patient is losing a lot of bone, their tooth looks long, obviously. So they have perio. You know that, I know that, everybody knows that, probably not the patient, who knows. But you still, you need to take the pockets to know for sure if a patient has perio, okay? So if this is confusing you, if you're not sure, go back to your perio chapter, um, gingivitis chapter. If you're in my course, go back to those um, topics and learn it all again, okay? Or just simply ask me questions, I am more than happy to help. Um, another thing that I want you guys to look into is different things like um, what should you recommend to a patient, okay? Brush twice a day and make sure to floss once a day. You, they do not have to brush four times a day. They do not have to floss five times a day. So remember that more is not better for the board exam. Brush twice a day and floss once a day. If you're recommending a mouthwash, it's because there's other circumstances. If on the board exam the patient tells you they're not going to brush, they prefer mouthwash. The right answer is to recommend mouthwash. 
Not to recommend brushing twice a day because it says in that case study that they're not going to. So always think outside the box. Okay, so switching things up a little bit. Um, no things like, sorry guys, I'm just going through my questions here. I just talked about gingivitis, talked about perio. Um, make sure to know the x-ray chapter, your radiography. Know the step up, the step down transformers. Know what they do. Know the different steps. Know the, um, the different areas of the um, cathode and the anode. Know that, okay? In fact, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to show you guys a diagram one moment here. Hey you guys, sorry about that. I just quickly um, looked up um, kind of an image here. So know this simple image. Yes, it looks very, very simple, but the main thing to note is that on the one side you have the cathode, the other side you have the anode. The electron cloud starts to form in the middle here and then it goes down to take that x-ray, okay? Obviously, you need to know more than that, but if this is confusing to you, go back to that topic and study this again, okay? Let me just stop sharing my screen again. Know things like what is the Molly um, Bedunum um, cup used for? So if that is confusing you and you're like, what's the Molly Bedunum cup? Not a good sign. Make sure to go back to your x-ray chapter and study that. So, um, sorry, I just kind of left a couple examples for you guys. So the Molly um, Bedunum cup helps to focus those electrons towards the anode. So you need to know the different parts. Um, a lot of students think that it will take those, uh, those um, electrons and go towards the cathode, but it's not. It is the anode, okay? They might start a little bit in the cathode, but it goes towards the anode, okay? So something to make note of. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, no, I think that's what I wanted to say. So the Molly Bedunum cup, it's at the cathode part, but you want it to go towards the anode. So a lot of students get confused with that one. Um, what else? Uh, remember how I said to know the difference between the step up and the step down transformer. So just a quick recap, like the step down transformer, it decreases um, the voltage where the step up increases it. So if you're not sure what the different steps are, that is something that you should know. And I'm moving down a couple things. No little things, but not so little things, like what types of x-rays are done for what problem. If you're looking at cavities, you want to take the checkup x-ray, so the bite wings, because you want to check in between the teeth. With the bite wings, you're most concerned about the horizontal angulation, because if that's off, you get overlap. The biggest problem ever to have in the dental office, they will ask you that on the board exam. So the bite wings, horizontal to prevent overlap. If you're looking to take a PA, so obviously of that specific tooth, it's probably because the patient's having pain or they're just pointing to a tooth and saying something doesn't feel quite right. If you wanna check if there's something stuck underneath the gums, take a PA things like that. So know why and when you would take different types of x-rays. Um, know a lot about the Panorex. Yes, you need a lead apron for the Panorex. A lot of students tell me you do not. In some areas where you practice, depending on where you live, in a dental office, they actually don't use lead aprons for a Panorex, but here in Canada, we use them. On the board exam, you need to use a lead apron, but not a thyroid collar. Not a thyroid collar, but you need to use the lead apron. And why would you not if you're thinking about it? I don't understand that. Even, you know, I have only worked in Canada, so we do use the lead apron. But students and um, even dental assistants, dental um, hygienists are telling me in their office in the States, they don't use the lead apron for the Panorex because apparently it hinders the x-ray. Well, the x-rays look just fine in Canada, so why not just use the lead apron? But anyway, that's just me. On the board exam for US and Canada, they want you to know lead apron for all x-rays. You just don't need a thyroid collar for the Panorex, but you do need a thyroid collar for the other x-rays. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so far so good. Um, let's see. 
you need to know things like how to use nicotine gum. So did you know that? They'd like to ask about smoking. Um, if a patient's coming to you and saying, I want to quit smoking, how do you help them? You need to know the different steps. Nicotine gum isn't something you chew for 20 minutes. It's you pretty much chew it a little bit to um, release the nicotine-ness in there, and then you would leave it sort of like in your cheek. And that's supposed to help to prevent you from wanting to smoke. So again, if you said, well, you have to chew that for 20 minutes, that would be the wrong answer. So you need to know how to properly use it. Um, know things like the neighbor's probe. Do you know what a neighbor's probe is? Helps to check for the furcations. You need a neighbor's probe to check furcations. Very important. Know the different classes of furcations. Class one, class two, class three. Know how to write that on the chart. Class one is an open triangle. Class two is a closed triangle. Class three is a closed triangle and um, colored in. Okay, so class one, the neighbor's probe, you know there's a furcation, but you can't get through. Class two is you can get through about halfway. Class three is you can get that probe all the way through to the other side. Not good. They have bone loss happening, right? Okay, what else can I tell you? Just kind of going through. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention, sorry, you guys, um, about the different types of, or sorry, the different steps in smoking cessation. It is ask, advise, assess, assist, and arrange. So I had to look at that because even I get them mixed up. So ask, advise, assess, assist, and arrange. I do have a video actually on this. So feel free to do a search in my YouTube channel for smoking cessation and that will come up. So if you didn't know that, it's time to start studying. Um, and I should mention that I do have a course now that if you are taking the board exam soon, like in a month or two, my full course, um, the Board Exam Prep Academy, isn't the one for you because I suggest students study that for at least six months, okay? Because it's a lot. It involves tutoring, you know, everything. If you only have a month left to study, it's not a waste or anything, but you will not be, be able to get through everything. You will get overwhelmed. You will be like, oh my God. So you don't want that one. If you don't have a lot of time to study, so if you have a month or two left, you want the 30 day um, express board exam prep. So I sort of give you like a breakdown of what to study in 30 days. So I can leave the link for you guys on the bottom of that. It's, it's not as big, not as thorough as the Board Exam Prep Academy. That is still the best one. But if you don't have a lot of time, even if you have like three weeks left to study, purchase that 30 day um, express board exam prep because at least you can go through everything and know that you will pass the board exam. So I will leave the link for you guys for that on the bottom. Definitely check it out. Um, okay, more questions for you guys. So I did talk about this, right? When does gingivitis advance to perio? As soon as you have that four millimeter pocket. Okay, so make sure to know that. Um, sorry guys, just going through my questions. And if you guys have questions, make sure to comment because I love seeing everybody's comments and I do try to get to them quickly. It might take a couple days because um, I'm busy, busy, but please make sure to comment. I just always like to see everybody's comments. Um, oh, no processing errors of x-ray. So either processing or when somebody's taking the x-ray when they're leaving, um, let's say they're taking a pan and the patient's earrings are left in, how does that look on the x-ray? because they will be showing you x-rays that were not taken properly and then asking you how to correct it. So if you see these big circles in a panorex, well, the patient left the earrings in to correct it, they need to take them out, okay? Happens in the real world all the time. It does, yes, happens to me too, but you need to know how to correct them. Um, what else here? Let's see, guys, just kind of checking my, kind of talked about everything already. I'm moving ahead of myself here. Oh, don't forget microbiology. Know the different types of bacteria. Know which ones cause cavities, which ones cause gingivitis, and which ones um, cause root caries, okay? I just talked about this 
in um, the Board Exam Prep Academy. So I go through all of that if you guys need more help. Even in the 30 day express board exam prep course, I have it all right there. So you don't actually have to go through your textbooks again and again and again. I have it all there for you. Um, but just, but just um, one that a lot of students get confused with is the uh, facilitative bacteria. So you need to know which, um, which ones can live with oxygen and which ones cannot, and then which ones can live with both. So the, um, uh, facilitative bacteria can live with or without oxygen. So imagine they can survive in anything and they're harder to kill. So you need to know that. Um, and anaerobic bacteria lives without oxygen and um, aerobic bacteria lives with oxygen. So they need oxygen to live. So know those three. Okay. So I just kind of gave you guys the answer. You didn't even have to look them up. Um, another question that I wanted to make sure to talk about, and sorry, is this video getting too long? I should have checked when I started. Sorry, guys, but it's kind of fun to study, right? Um, so when ingested, 90 to 90% of, um, of um, fluoride is absorbed through what? So 90 to 90% of fluoride is absorbed through what? Stomach and small intestine. So make sure to know things like that. I go through this in the microbiology unit of both the Board Exam Prep Academy and um, the 30 Day Express course. So if microbiology is something that you're really not sure about, I do highly um, recommend you having a look at one of those courses because I can help you. You don't have to look through your textbooks because that's not a lot of fun, right? And there's so many case studies in the course too because everybody loves case studies, right? Um, know things like, um, pharmacology, of course. So which of the following is found in the body of a prescription? The name of a drug is found in the body. So you need to know things like that. You need to know what things stand for. Um, which of the following's penicillins is a broad spectrum? So is it um, amoxicillin? Is it penicillin V, penicillin um, G, or as Ezthromycin. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Ez Ezthromycin. So, which of the following is penicillin's broad spectrum? That is amoxicillin. So, now everybody knows. And this, um, I do have a full mock exam on all of that um, under your pharmacology unit in the board exam prep course and the 30 day express course. Um, make sure to know oral pathology to you guys. So they will show you things like amalgam tattoos and say, what is this? They will show you things like linea alba, um, leukoedema, leukoplakia, candidiasis, tonsil stones. They will show you those things and say, what is this? So make sure to know that. Or just look through your oral pathology unit and my courses. It's all right there for you. Um, so how is that so far, you guys? I don't want to put anybody to sleep. If you guys are having a hard time, there's so much more obviously to study. This was just kind of a quick recap, but if you need help, let me know. Sign up for one of my courses. It's all there for you. As I said, the Board Exam Prep Academy is still, in my opinion, the best one because I go through everything, just what you need to know for the board exam, plus there's case studies, plus there's mock exams, plus there's live tutoring. In the 30-day um, express course, that is excellent too. It's perfect if you don't have a lot of time to study because it goes through those main topics that you need to know for the board exam. Not everything, because that would be impossible in 30 days, right? But it goes through the main topics. That If you at least study all of that, you are off to a good start and you should pass. So far, students who have taken my 30-day express course have passed. It's a fairly new course, um, so I don't have a percentage on it yet, but taking the board exam prep, um, board exam prep academy, 99.9, or sorry, 99.8% of students pass. So that's a big number, right? Anyways, let me know if any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope this helped, and I hope I didn't put anybody to sleep. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.